The Publish Subscribe pattern is a messaging pattern allowing you to achieve loosely coupled communication between services. Did you also know that you can implement the Publish Subscribe pattern using Redis channels? I prepared a project with two worker services. One is the Publisher service and the other is the Subscriber worker service. When you create a worker service using the template, you get a background service like this one where the worker service is going to write an information log to the console every 1000 milliseconds. I set up the solution to start both the applications at the same time. And you can see that both of our worker services are logging to the console every 1000 milliseconds. So these are the logs coming from the subscriber and these are the logs coming from the publisher. And now I'm going to show you how you can send messages from the publisher service to the subscriber service using Redis channels. If you're not familiar with Redis, it's an in-memory database and it's most commonly used as a cache. But what most people don't know is that Redis also has very nice support for the publish subscribe pattern using channels. Redis channels are very similar to topics in a message broker, which means that when you publish a message to a channel, you can have multiple subscribers listening to that channel and all of the subscribers are going to receive the published message. To get started with Redis in our publisher service, let's add a new NuGet package. So the one I'm looking for is the Stack Exchange Redis library and let's go ahead and install it. So this is the one that we want to install and it's going to allow us to work with Redis. Let's also install the same library in our subscriber project so that we don't have to think about it later. So stack exchange redis and I'm installing the same library in our subscriber worker service. So let's go back to our producer. What we want to do in our producer is connect to the redis instance that I'm going to spin up using docker and then I'm going to publish a message to the channel. And in the subscriber worker service we're going to be listening to the same channel and we're going to process all of the incoming messages. So I'm going to start out by defining the connection string to our Redis instance and also the actual connection to the Redis database. So let's go ahead and define the connection string. It's going to be a private static read-only string, which I will call connection string. And the value is localhost on the port 6379. So this is going to be our connection string pointing to our locally running Redis instance. Let's also create a new field that is going to contain our actual connection to the Redis instance. So this is going to be a connection multiplexer, which is going to come from the Stack Exchange Redis library that we just installed. So connection multiplexer, let's give it a name of connection and let's instantiate it by calling connection multiplexer connect. And you can see that there are a few overloads for this method. The one that I'm looking for just accepts the raw connection string. So I'm going to pass in the connection string and this is going to be enough to connect to my Redis instance. And the last thing I need is to predefine what channel I'm going to be publishing my messages to. So let's define a constant for the channel name and let's give it the name of test channel. So now that we have everything prepared, Let's see how can we actually connect to this channel and publish a message. Inside of the execute async method, which actually runs our worker service, let's do something like this. I'm going to use the connection to our Redis instance to create a subscriber instance. So you're going to say connection and you call the get subscriber method, which is going to contain a pub sub subscriber connection to the specific Redis instance. So now we can use this subscriber to publish messages to a channel or we can use it to listen for messages coming from this channel. So let's send a message to our subscriber inside of our while loop. And just before I'm going to await this thread, let's call subscriber and let's see what we have access to on the iSubscriber instance. So what you're probably looking for is the publish async method which is going to allow us to send a message to a Redis channel. So let's specify the channel name with the constant we, that we defined previously. And let's see what we can do for our message. So let's do something very trivial and just say test message. It doesn't really matter. And also we can pass in an optional command flags value, 
which allows us to configure some additional behavior. I'm going to leave it empty for now. And let's also await the call to publish async. So I'm going to update the delay slightly. And we're going to say every five seconds, publish a message to this channel with the value of test message. If we head over to our subscriber instance, let's see how we can actually listen to messages coming from the channel from the producer instance. I'm going to add the same connection string, connection multiplexer and channel values inside of our consumer. And we also need to obtain a pub sub subscriber instance. So I'm going to say subscriber and we get it by calling connection get subscriber. Now that we have our subscriber instance, we can use it to subscribe to the test channel and listen for incoming messages. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say subscriber, subscribe async, and we need to specify which channel we are subscribing to. So we're going to pass in the test channel value and we need to specify a handler that is going to handle a message for the given channel. So I'm just going to define a delegate which is going to contain the channel and the message as the arguments. And we're going to await, of course, the call to subscribe async. And inside of the actual handler, we can do whatever we want. Let's do something simple. I'm going to just log an information level log. Let's define the message format as received message. And we're going to add a parameter for the channel and also for the message. And let's specify the actual channel and message values. For this to actually work, you need to spin up a Redis instance and I'm going to use Docker to run Redis on my local machine. How you can run Redis using Docker is by executing this command. I'm calling docker run, giving my container some specific name, in this case Redis PubSub, specifying what port I want to run Redis on and in the end I'm specifying which image I want to run, which is the Docker image. So I'm going to run this command and it's going to spin up Redis in a Docker container. So if I go over to my Docker desktop, you can see that I have one running container, which is the Redis pub sub, which I just created. So this is the instance that my producer and consumer applications are going to be connecting to and publishing messages using a Redis channel. If I start the application now, it's going to spin up both of the services again. And let's take a look at what is going on. So they are now connecting to the Redis instance. And you can see our producer has published a message and on this consumer or the subscriber side, we are successfully receiving that message from the test channel and the content of that message is just test message, which is the fixed message that we were sending. So every five seconds, we are going to get a new message from the channel. Now watch what's going to happen if I introduce another subscriber. So what we have now is one publisher application, which is the one here which is sending messages to our Redis channel. And I have two subscriber applications, which are this one and this one, and they are both consuming messages from the same channel. So as I mentioned previously, Redis channels work like topics, which means that you can have multiple subscribers listening on the same channel, and all of the subscribers are going to receive the incoming message. If you're enjoying this video about the publish subscribe pattern using Reddish channels, then make sure to smash that like button and definitely subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. One more thing I want to show you, and let me close down all of these applications, is related to sending a more complex message than just a simple string. Typically, you wouldn't just publish a simple test message string to the channel, but you would publish perhaps a more complex object may be serialized into JSON. So let's see how we can achieve that. I'm going to quickly create a shared library here that both of my worker services can reference. And inside of it, I'm going to define a message that can be published to the Redis channel. I added the contracts class library and I defined a simple message record with just a GUID ID and a date time created on property. And we're going to use this message to send it over the channel using Redis PubSub. So let's go to our producer. And right here, let's get rid of this log, for example, and let's create a new message that we're going to publish to the Redis channel. So let's create a new message instance, and I'm going to say new message. We're going to specify a new GUID value and the current date and time. So date time, I'm going to say UTC now. All right, and to be able to send it 
over the channel. I'm going to just serialize it into JSON. So I'm going to say JSON serializer, serialize this message object into a string. And now I'm going to attempt to send this JSON over the Redis channel. And on the consumer side, we're going to do the reverse. Here, where we listen to the message coming from the test channel, we know that the incoming message should be in a JSON format. So I'm going to create an object, which is going to be message deserialized. And we're going to say JSON serializer deserialize into a message instance. And we're going to specify the incoming message coming from our channel. Instead of logging the raw message here, I'm going to log the deserialized message inside of our log information call. Let me just move this into separate lines so that it's easier for you to see. So now hopefully when I send the serialized JSON over the Redis channel, it's going to get deserialized here first. And then I'm hoping that we're going to see the message object properly deserialized into JSON. I'm also going to add the add character here so that this object is destructured into individual properties in the actual log message. So let's start the application and see if this is actually working. I have the publisher and subscriber worker service running side by side. And you can see that when the publisher sends a message over the Redis channel, we managed to successfully receive it in our subscriber application. And even though it's an object coming from JSON, we successfully deserialize it on the receiving end and we are able to send a strongly typed message using Redis channels between our two applications. One thing that you need to be aware of if you're considering using Redis for PubSub is that the Redis channels communication is not reliable. So if you need guaranteed message delivery, then this is probably not a good fit and you should consider a proper message broker like maybe RabbitMQ or Azure Service Bus, but with you are fine with occasionally not receiving some messages on your subscribers, then Redis pops up may be a good fit for your use case. I really hope that you enjoyed this video about implementing the pops up pattern using Redis channels. And until next time, stay awesome.